Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Drawing Animals from the Galapagos Islands with Matt. Grab your pencil, grab your paper, follow along with me as I today am going to teach you how to draw a sea lion and teach you a little bit about sea lions in the process. Now, we're doing this to go along with Dr. Ellen Prager reading her Escape Galapagos book, part of the Wonderlist Adventures series. And you can find videos of her reading over on the Florida Aquarium Facebook page, YouTube channel. And if you go to the website, you can find a coloring sheet that accompanies these videos, as well as a link to those videos. Just look under Education, Digital Resources, Dr. Ellen Prager, Escape Galapagos Reading. Now, here's a picture of Galapagos sea lions, courtesy of my uncle Ralph. Thank you very much for sharing your photography from your trip there. And I just wanted you to get an idea of what they look like. I mean, most people know what a sea lion looks like, but just in case. So we're going to start this drawing with putting in that foundation that I talked about last time, putting in that structure. And the way I'm going to do that is by, I'm looking at a reference right now, and what I'm going to do is put in these basic shapes. I'm not going to just start drawing the details of the nose and the back and the flippers and all that sort of thing. I'm going to put in these kind of big blocky shapes. And what this does is it helps me to understand not only where the sea lion is going to be on the page, but also what it's going to look like. Is is the head the right size compared to the, the behind? Is, you know, is all that stuff making sense. And if you're doing this on a pencil with a pencil and on paper, you just want to draw very lightly so that you can go over it and maybe erase. Um, if you're doing it digitally like I am, you can just do another layer. And I did it that way for you guys so that you could see my lines and they would show up. If I did it with light pencil, it'd be a little bit difficult to see. So this works out very, very well. But here you can see I'm just kind of putting in all these different pieces. And uh, what's going to happen is when I'm done with this very rough sketch, it's going to be very loose and very simple. And then I'm going to go over it again and I'm going to get more details. And after I do that, I'm going to go over it a third time. And that is when I'm going to finally do the real serious uh, details and, and add what I what I will call the ink layer, even though this is a digital picture. So here you see I've zoomed in to the snout and the head of our sea lion, trying to get the just an idea of where the nose goes, where the mouth goes, uh, where the eyes go. Now I got to tell you, um, sea lions are interesting animals. They're part of an order of animals called pinnipeds. And pinnipeds could be anything from sea lions to seals to walruses. But the sea lions are in a specific group of those. And what makes them different from the true seals and, say, the walruses is they have this external ear flap. So you can see I kind of put a hint of that little ear flap in right there. Now, there are several species of sea lions and some fur seals, which are actually sort of closer relatives of the sea lion than they are of the true seals. But uh, but these guys like it. The, the Galapagos ones, they like to hang out on the beach. They like to hang out by the shore. And one of the things that makes them different than true seals is that they have a good ability to walk around on land. So where most seals, all seals really, they don't have good use of their back flippers for land. They use that for being in the water and pushing through the water really fast. On land, they they rely more kind of hopping around on their, on their bellies and with their front flippers a little bit. Sea lions, however, can kind of swivel their back flippers around and that makes them really good at moving across land, even across rocky areas and that sort of thing. But at the same time, that makes them not as good using those flippers for swimming. So they rely more on their front flippers. So if you remember me talking about sea turtles, if you watched my Mondays with Matt live on the Facebook page, I talked about uh, sea turtles being front wheel drive and freshwater turtles being rear wheel drive. What's well, kind of the same thing going on with true seals and the sea lion. So here you see I am putting in some more specific detailed lines now. It's still not perfect. It's still not exactly where I want everything to be, but I'm kind of fine tuning it. I'm getting it a little bit more in place. See, I moved the ear down a little bit. I'm sort of getting an understanding of where I want everything to be. And as I do that, you're going to see the sea lion get more and more detailed and hopefully come to life a little bit more. 
Now, like I said earlier in this video, I am going to make this available as a coloring page and I would love for you guys to post your drawings and your color colored versions of the coloring pages over on the Facebook channel. Just find where this is posted on Facebook and just leave it in the comments below. And uh, I'd love to see what you guys have done. I saw what some people did last week with the marine iguanas and it was really cool. I love seeing your artwork out there. So here we go. Get that back in there and there's the back flippers like I said they're they're smaller than the front flippers on the sea lion which is different than seals and um, they're still pretty long though but they're but they're able to kind of twist them around like you see this one's kind of twisted around here now when I'm drawing this flipper here it's not maybe the shape you would think of a flipper being but that's because we're not looking at this flipper completely from the side. We're sort of looking straight ahead at the bottom of it. And so we have to use different things. That, the way things look in perspective sometimes is different than we would think. Sometimes there's stuff called foreshortening, which is kind of happening here. I mean, this sea lion's flipper is a lot longer than what it looks like if you just measured it. But hopefully through your drawing, you can give that representation of what that flipper would look like in a three-dimensional space, even though you're just drawing it on paper or in this case, on screen. I'm going to add some rocks, just a little rocky ledge. The sea lions like to hang out on the beach, but they'll also hang out on rocky ledges. There's also a fur seal, Galapagos fur seal, that lives in the Galapagos Islands, and they like it more in the shade, and they like the rocks even more than the sea lions. So they are similar. They're, they're an eared seal, so they do have the ear flaps and stuff. They're kind of more like a sea lion than a seal. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm lowering the opacity. So this is where you would be drawing light or maybe erasing a little bit and just having that hint of a line there. And now I'm going to go in with uh, my ink. And I say ink, of course, this is a digital representation, which by the way, if you're curious, I'm using a program called Procreate on an iPad. And that's what I'm, but there's a lot of things you could draw with digitally. If you have a phone or a tablet or even a computer, you might find lots of different software you could use. But uh, if you're drawing on pencil and paper, you could take a Sharpie or uh, any kind of black marker, whatever color marker you want, and put in these details. The thing you can't do, though, very easily is if you're on paper, you can't erase your lines. So you want to be very careful and meticulous about where you put all these different things so you get them right where you want them. But hey, look, if you mess up, you just have to do it again. And that can be fun. So don't worry about it too much. So here we've got the sea lion mouth in here. I'm going to, whoops, see there? You can't do that in real life. Well, this is real life. You can't do that on a piece of paper, but you can digitally. I just undid it and redid it. Getting this head shape in there and see I'm adding a little bit more definition to those lines, making sure I've got the curves right and the flat parts right and everything kind of lining up pretty good. And uh, yeah, starting to look like our sea lion. He's got a little bit of cartoony eyes here though. This isn't a super realistic looking sea lion, but it's a fairly realistic looking sea lion. Would you say that's fair? I think that's fair. Putting in some little highlights, that's another thing if you're doing this in ink, uh, you can take a little bit of white paint or something and uh, put that on there to give the highlights, bring the highlights back, or you would have to leave that space without any ink. So you'd have to draw like a little circle Make sure you didn't do that. Putting the flippers in here, the flippers, the whiskers in here, adding those whiskers onto our sea lion. Sea lions have big, we call them vibrissae or whiskers, and they use that with their nose to feel what's around them and smell what's around them. It's how they can find their food, which by the way, Galapagos sea lions like to eat mostly fish. Now, they might be able to find some fish near shore, but a lot of times, especially during like El Nino's, when the climate is a little bit different, they have to go pretty far offshore and find those fish to eat. There's our other flipper back there. And again, you got to kind of represent this in a two-dimensional space to make it look 3D. So that flipper, uh, that's why I'm drawing that second line there and get the back in here. Didn't get it right the first time, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> I can also tell you that I've noticed that when I do draw traditionally with a regular ink pen, uh, it's for me, it's easier to get those strokes right the first time with a real pen. It's getting pretty close digitally, pretty, pretty close, but still not quite there 100% yet. But there are some definite advantages to drawing digitally. 
Got to get the belly in there as well. Now, what I wanted to do in this particular drawing is I wanted to not just do one sea lion. I wanted to do a couple of sea lions because the coloring page that I created, which you'll see at the end of this, uh, has two sea lions in it. I wanted to make it more of an interesting picture than just a single sea lion sitting on the beach. I mean, that would be pretty interesting. These, these guys are supposed to be really friendly and uh, they don't mind people as long as you give them a little bit of respect. If you're in the Galapagos Islands, you know, you can walk close to them. You just want to give them their own space. They are wild animals, so we always want to respect that. But they're supposed to be very friendly. They're also very social. Sea lions, all the different species of sea lions, are pretty social, living in huge groups. And that is true on the Galapagos Islands. I always hear it's one of the first animals you'll see if you go over to the Galapagos. All right, now there's our first sea lion, okay? And now we are going to start our second sea lion. Now the second sea lion that I'm gonna do for you guys, this one is going to be actually swimming under the water. So here we go again, starting out the same way with the sea lion. And look, I think these are the first sea lions I have ever drawn in my life. So uh, this is not something that I draw a lot of. And since I don't have a lot of practice drawing sea lions, I really had to focus on getting these shapes in so I could get it right. Because I didn't have time to draw like 100 sea lions before I did this. So drawing shapes can allow you to draw things you're not as familiar with. You know, if I'm drawing a shark, I draw a lot of sharks. I don't necessarily have to do this, although it still helps and it's still always a good idea. Now what did happen though, is that now that I'm doing my second sea lion, now I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with the sea lion. I know I've kind of looked at it, studied it. And so instead of doing this three times where I do a rough sketch and then a little bit less rough sketch and then the final ink drawings, ink lines, I decided to just do one rough sketch and then that was good enough. And I could kind of get enough detail from this first rough sketch that when I went back in with the uh, digital ink, I was good to go. And I, that worked out pretty well, as you will see here in a moment. I gotta still add some details here, though. Here are those back flippers. They're kind of split into two um, little floppy fin things with little digits on there. They have bones in their flippers, which are similar to arm bones and leg bones and finger bones and things like that. So pretty interesting stuff. Now we're getting the eyes in here. And one of the things that can make your drawing look more interesting is if you put things on angles. Now I could have just done a 100% profile view or side view of the sea lion's face, and that would have been the easier way to do this, but it wouldn't look as interesting in most cases. So I wanted to vary it a little bit. I wanted to give it a little bit of a turn. So what I did is I turned the sea lion's head in space just slightly. It's still almost a side view, but you can kind of see the front of the nose there a little bit, and uh, you can see the the front of the mouth a little bit, and you can sort of see that other eye popping up on the other side of the head. And to me, this makes it a little bit more interesting. And sometimes things like that can be intimidating to draw, but what you can find, what you'll find is that if you really are drawing and looking at the thing you're drawing as a bunch of shapes, a bunch of lines, don't think of it as, oh, I just turned the sea lion's face sideways. Concentrate on those lines, concentrate on those shapes. You'll find it's really not as daunting as maybe at first seemed. So here we go. I am putting a little bit darker lines in there, but you can see that I got a little more detail in this sea lion from this rough sketch. And now here I am, I'm gonna go in, I'm switching to my ink, and I'm gonna give this sea lion its ink layer here. Here we go. Now one of the other advantages of drawing digitally is you can zoom in if you want to, like I'm doing right here, which is pretty helpful. Of course, if you're doing this on paper, you can't do that, but you can just make sure you're drawing it big enough that you can see or, you know, I don't know. I, I find myself now when I draw on paper, I try and zoom into the paper. It doesn't, doesn't actually work, but, uh, but it's different. It feels a little different. So here we go. Again, see, I, I'm changing the shape a little bit. I'm not following these blue pencil lines exactly. I'm, I'm making them a little bit more, not perfect, perfect, but as perfect as I can get them in this drawing to make it look like our sea line. In fact, I'm giving this one a little bit of a smile, which is not super accurate to a real sea lion, but for a fun coloring page, I thought, hey, we'll make this a happy sea lion, a happy little sea lion. There we go. Here's this eye, and they have this sort of 
lid around their eye that you can normally see I notice when you can see them up closer and this one is going to be more in the front so it's going to be bigger so I wanted to add more details than the one that is in the back even though I drew the one in the back about the same size when I did the coloring page I actually shrunk it down and then I had to kind of go over the lines again and I simplified it a little bit you'll see that if you download that coloring page here are our vibrisse our whiskers and if you're wondering what color are sea lions, if you're not sure, well, they are lots of different colors, usually shades of tans and browns. When they're in the water, they're darker brown. But of course, this is your sea lion. You can make it whatever color you want. I know I gave this to my friend Kimber to draw as like a test, and she colored hers purple. Hey, it's her sea lion. She can color it whatever color she wants, right? <laughs> and it made it pretty interesting looking sea lion. So here we go. We're going to keep adding some lines here, get the the flipper going here, this front flipper, front wheel drive sea lion, right there. And then we'll get the uh, the other fin or flipper in down here underneath this belly. Now here's one thing that you can do in digital that you can't do on paper, and that is move your drawing around on the page. And I didn't do it right there, but uh, if you were doing a coloring page or just doing any kind of drawing, one of the reasons you want to do those light pencil lines is to make sure it's in the right spot because if you put it too low, too off to the left, too off to the right, too high, well, you're kind of stuck with it. Once you start inking, your only choice is to totally redo it. But if you do it lightly with pencil and especially just get those blocky shapes in, you're not as upset if you have to move three circles or ovals as you would be if you had to move all this detail that you put in. So here we go. Here is our second sea lion. And here's the coloring page I made that you can download over on the Florida Aquarium website. Here it is with, with some color I added to it. So thank you for watching. If you want to see more, let us know. And until next time, I'll see you later.